Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now last year I made a video about a study that had been done on people who had been vaccinated in Florida which contained the excellent news that there was no increase in mortality following vaccination in any age group. Strangely enough though a lot of people discussing the study, including the Surgeon General of Florida, weren't talking about these amazing results. Instead, they chose to look at a small subgroup analysis that didn't show such positive results, leading to the claim that there was an increase in cardiac-related mortality in men aged 18 to 39 following vaccination. Of course, if this was true, it meant that there was a decrease in non-cardiac mortality in the same age group. But for some reason, this wasn't discussed. And if you would like to know more about the issues with the study, I will provide a link to the video that I made about it at the time in this video's description. But in this video, we won't be talking about the flaws in the study. We will be talking about information that was deliberately removed from the study to support an anti-vax agenda. But before I get on to what was deliberately removed, I would just like to acknowledge a few people who were instrumental in bringing this information to light. Firstly, Christopher O'Donnell, who is a journalist with the Tampa Bay Times, who was able to obtain drafts of previous versions of the report through a Freedom of Information request. And a number of experts helped him analyse those drafts for the article that he wrote about it, including Dr. Jonathan Laxton, who is a physician and assistant professor of medicine at the University of Manitoba, Dr. Katrina Wallace, who is an epidemiologist at the University of Illinois, and Professor Matt Hitchings, who is an infectious disease epidemiologist and professor of biostatistics at the University of Florida. And I will provide some links in the video's description to their social media accounts in case you would like to follow them. And they are worth following. Now, it turns out that there were five drafts before the final report was made public. And every one of those drafts contained information that was pertinent to assessing the risks and benefits of the vaccines that was left out of the final report. Although different drafts had different bits of information left out. But all in all, there were three critical bits of information left out. Now, I'm not trying to keep you in suspense, but before I tell you about the first thing, I just need to briefly explain about the technique they used to analyse the data. They used what is known as the self-controlled case series method, which is a study design where individuals act as their own control. In the final report, they compared mortality within the first 28 days following the last dose of vaccine with mortality for the next 21 weeks. The idea is if there is a problem from the vaccines, it is going to show up in increased mortality directly following the vaccine. Now, if you're wondering why they chose 28 days as the exposure period instead of a different time period, I have no idea because they didn't explain. What is curious, however, is that in the first draft, they didn't use 28 days as the exposure period. They used six weeks or 42 days. And the six-week risk period was also divided into individual weeks to assess if there was an indication of increased risk during any of the weeks comprising the whole risk period. And this was their conclusion. I'll just read it out to you. In this statewide study involving vaccinated persons aged 12 years or older in Florida, no increase in the incidence of natural or cause, natural or cause slash unknown or cardiac related deaths was detected following COVID-19 vaccination. Significant, Significant decreases in death incidence following vaccination were observed for some groups evaluated, 
this decrease in risk following vaccination is likely due to the healthy vaccinee bias where individuals are healthier at the time of vaccination and with time their health may decline. And for those of you who are regular watchers, this healthy vaccinee bias is a thing that Professor Norman Fenton was saying doesn't exist when he appeared on Dr John Campbell's channel. As I mentioned, they also looked at the risk by week and they didn't find any increase in all cause or cardiovascular related mortality for any week or any age. So having shown that there was no increase in risk for any type of death or any age group, they changed the exposure period from six weeks to four weeks for the analysis in the next draft. They also switched from 18 weeks follow-up to 25 weeks follow-up. Now, if you're thinking this sounds a bit dodgy, you're right. Because the selection of the exposure period and the follow-up period is somewhat arbitrary, you would normally redo the calculation for different exposure periods as part of the analysis to make sure the results hold up. If a small change in exposure period alters the results, it suggests that your findings may not be robust. In this case, they already had evidence that it didn't hold up for a six-week exposure period when they switched to four weeks. But it gets worse. This is table one from the final report, which is based on the four-week exposure period. It shows that there was no increase in all-cause mortality following vaccination for any age group, but that there was a small increase in cardiac-related mortality following vaccination for 25 to 39-year-olds. Believe it or not, the original version of the table looked rather different. This is a previous version of the table. As you can see, it didn't just include mortality after vaccination, it also included mortality after a positive COVID test. And I'll just go over the figures for the 25 to 39 year old age group. For all cause mortality, the relative incidence is 0.84 after vaccination, but 8.91 after COVID. And for cardiac-related mortality, it is 2.16 after vaccination, but 15.39 after COVID. Now, if someone is trying to look at the risks and benefits of vaccination, they need both pieces of information. So why was this deliberately removed from the report? But wait, there's more. In earlier drafts of the report, the authors also did a sensitivity analysis to see if the results they found were actually robust. In the primary analysis, they used the last dose to calculate the exposure period. But this is not a good technique when you have a multi-dose regime, which is what the majority of the vaccines are. Therefore, they used a technique known as the event-dependent exposures method to look at the risk following each dose. When they did this more robust analysis, they found that there was no significant increase in cardiac mortality after either dose for any of the age groups where it was seen in the primary analysis. And this was emphasised in the conclusion where they said the following. In summary, although results from the primary analysis revealed a small increase in risk following COVID-19 vaccination, the estimates were biased upwards. The results from the event-dependent model that uses unbiased estimating equations adjusted for age yielded non-significant results for each subgroup considered statistically significant in the primary analysis indicating there is no increased risk for cardiac mortality following mRNA vaccinations. The risk associated with COVID-19 infection clearly outweighs any potential risk associated with mRNA vaccination. So why did the Florida Health Department remove this information and replace it with information that 
they knew was false? And why did they remove the information that showed the extent of the increased mortality from COVID in all age groups, including young men? Why did they not allow their citizens to know the truth? Unfortunately, I don't have any answers. But if you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or beautiful Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. So thank you.